Rec and General Services Cemetery Division. Um, out there at the cemetery, we was helping maintain and work outside all day, cutting grass, weed eating, and sometimes digging graves, majority of the times, and filling in graves for services, funeral services. Um, we worked in the very hot extreme weather. Um, I'm a member of the Durham City Workers Union, UE Local 150. Um, I have been in this heat 12 years plus. It has definitely been getting hotter throughout the years, this year, and last year has been the hottest years that I've experienced working outside. Even though folks say you are on a lawnmower and it gets hot on a lawnmower because of the heat that comes from the motor, which a lot of folks understand, even though they might say, okay, you on a we ride the mower all day, you all right, but it's not true. That hot mower can make you fall asleep and maybe run into something, run off a um, hill or cliff, hurt yourself. So folks don't understand when they say you got it easy. Um, I speak up for myself when I feel the need, I need to stop, but not every worker is going to stop because they fear that they're gonna get retaliated on because they decide to take a break um, from their supervisor. Especially the weed eaters. They, they, they keep trying to push them in this hot weather and it's too hot when they get over 100 some degrees heat index to keep just weeding and weeding without taking frequent breaks. Um, we try to get early, start early in the morning to get everything done, but by the afternoon it's too hot, especially in the direct sun. When workers try to take their breaks, like I said, the supervisors, they get scared because they feel a retaliation. A few supervisors and crew chiefs that I work for, and not many, would actually take breaks and, you know, but that's not many good people out there like that. Um, this July, one of our UE 150 union members in the water department in Durham passed off from heat exhaustion. He was digging holes with a shovel for a new construction of, um, lay new to lay new on water lines. The first day he was feeling kind of weak and he asked the supervisor for a break, but he kept pushing him to get his work done. He did throw up. He was not informed, he was not informed that this was one of the first signs of heat related illness. His supervisor also did not inform him. The next day he was digging holes again and asked his supervisor again if he could slow it down. His supervisor encouraged him to keep going Eventually, he passed out and wound up in the hospital of heaven to get fluids for about six hours. He felt sick for about two weeks. This same situation happens every summer with city of workers worldwide, even in Durham and across the state. Um, our unions get reports in the city of Raleigh. We want a policy that says that the workers are not supposed to work at all if heat index is over 100 degrees. Yet myself, throughout the years, I start OSHA. It was an OSHA, you know, thing. But to find out that OSHA never mm -hmm. informed this or put this in plan that it was a rule to let, um, go by. Job, um, yet, yet the director and supervisor in silent ways act like the policy does not exist. One of our members who was a laborer on, on, the, on the back of silent waste truck jumped on and off the empty um, carts, passed out, and wound up in the hospital last summer. This worst situation we have faced in recent years as city workers is when a solid waste worker, a laborer, on the back of the yard waste truck in Charlotte, a brother named Anthony Millage, passed away due to heat exhaustion in the summer of 2017. It was 97 degrees heat index that day. He finished his regular shift, which usually ends up around one or two. You know, the hottest part of the day is around them times. Because he was a temp and not making a lot of money, he felt pressure to go back to a second shift that evening. He was working about $14 for the city that day in the heat. When he was moving to his car, he was stumbling because he was feeling weak. When he got home inside the, the air condition, he got, he got, a, he, he had a heat stroke and died. The city wiped their hands of it and said it was not work related because he died at home. We need the government to step up and enforce heat safety standards, like paid cooling breaks every hour, training or recognizing signs of heat illness and more. We have won some written work rules in some of the cities, but until we are strong enough to enforce them and the government has our back, that they will keep abusing us and breaking the rules. We need OSHA to make this a safety rule now. Now, just to give up some things, you know, that, um, that came across, that I have dealt with is that the city of Durham has a policy of no idling vehicles. Now, like I said, I worked at cemetery, um, two cemeteries, in fact, Maplewood Beachwood Cemetery. Before we had um, a facility in both areas, 
So recently they decided to take down one of the facilities at Beachwood Cemetery. Meaning that if you're out there in the heat or cold, that you can't get in the truck and cool off or, or get some heat. That you got to sit out there, wait for funerals in a direct heat without either. But instead, they let the police out of their vehicles when they just in the stores messing around or just walking around, they keep their vehicles on. So where's the point to where we um, provide that the workers can get into their vehicles if they have no facility to, to heat or cool off to get to, to cool off or heat? So I think they need to make that up, turn that policy around and make it efficient for everybody. If we can't do it, the police can't do it because they're not doing the job anyway. So, thank you.